What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel. It's about four in the morning right now. I'm trying to knock this out before we gotta go to work or before anybody in the household wakes up. Recently, we installed the lift and an upper control arm on this GX470. We've got this big beefy tire. In order for this tire to fit, this is by the way, a 295-7017. So it's a 33.26 inch tire, technically. It really feels like a 34. Well, let me show you guys what we're dealing with here, all right? It looks like we've got space, you know, first off, because we've got this thing off the ground. And second off, uh, even if I do put it on the ground, we're still going to have space here and there. The articulation of this thing kind of changes once you start turning or once you hit a bump and whatnot. And what happens is you start getting a little bit of rubbing here. So this should be an easy mod. And then you start getting some rubbing right here. So that's your body mount. This right here is metal going straight to your frame. And behind here is actually a body seam that it's kind of sharp. It comes out like this and it's all the way up to here. And even though this one's kind of further away from the tire, when we go to off-road or something, or you hit a bump, we don't want this thing bouncing back and hitting that just in case. So we're gonna go ahead and work on chopping the body mount or trimming it to make it shorter. Then we're going to weld in a filler piece. And then the body seam that's over here, we're going to slice into it basically you know into sections and then we're gonna hammer it in then we're gonna obviously coat the metal and all that so we don't get corrosion to make it easier for us to access this area we're going to need to remove the side steps I'm gonna show you guys first how we remove the side step then we're going to start hacking into this thing helpful tools for this project obviously a welder a lot of persuasion hacking cutoff tools so I've got my handy dandy angle grinder got this because we need to remove some of these Torx screws now you're gonna need your sledge heat we're going to use that to persuade some of the plastic so i'm using some rust reformer as well as some undercoating some rubber undercoating so this side was kind of like my practice side and just uh, gauge an idea of what we're going to be dealing with i've already got the side step off here got my body mount chop it used to come out to like right there and i've got it chopped off and then i've got a metal plate welded back in and then over here if you see so first off, I took some heat, persuaded this plastic into place. I basically folded it back on itself so I didn't have to cut into it. Then I just pushed it in with like a sledgehammer as I was holding it in with a sledgehammer. I went ahead and gave it some heat. Over here, you can kind of see some of the body seam folded downward. So before it was like out here. And what I did is I, I cut ribs into it and then you just, you just slowly hammer it in and then you cover it with some undercoating. Over here, I still haven't trimmed it yet, but we'll work on that here in a bit. So the first thing we'll actually need to do is remove these clips right here. They're located in the door jams pretty much or underneath the door jams on uh, both front and rear. They're most likely or most of them are going to break out because I'm too impatient on how I pull them out. But to, to see what they look like, this is how they look like. To get them out, you just got to come in with a pick tool or like a very small flathead screwdriver. Uh, so you're going to come in over here and over here and just kind of push these two tabs in. So you see that tab right there and then there's a tab right there. You just push them in and then pry out. I'm pretty sure Lexus has their own special tool to remove these. There's uh, several in the back and then you close the back and there's several in the front. Well, underneath we're going to remove two connectors. There's a connector right here. There's this rivet right here and then there's actually like two pop popping rivets in there and those look like like these you can see that one uh, i'm guessing is still left on the gx and then there's one right there that just kind of pops out and for the hardware you've got two four six bolts that you need to remove they're 12 millimeter bolts so let's go ahead and get to a time lapse <laughs> So I've got all the hardware out and I just wanted to show you guys real quick with these two rivets that were hiding behind here. We're looking at the, the side step from here. There's two rivets and to get to them, well, this one uh, popped out. I got it to pop out. And then this is the other one. That's how they look. So both look like that. 
And to pop those out, all you really need is to grab yourself uh, maybe some like pliers or in my case, like a flathead screwdriver. And then just, just you know, push on the ears. So I'm gonna push this ear. I'm gonna push the one on the outside in and this one inward. And then once those ears go inward, then we can go ahead and push this out. So it's kind of hard doing this with one hand, but uh, just showing, giving you guys an idea. So once we get those out, this thing will come off completely. I just wanted to make a quick comment regarding the power supply for the step lights. Here, this connector is what supplies the power to both connectors at both ends of the step lights. And just to put my mind at ease, I just went ahead and covered it up with some electrical tape and I'm gonna shove it in there for right now. What I'm actually planning to do is use this power supply and use it possibly for some like rock lights. So I think that would look pretty cool. I've seen a couple people on like the GXOR pages put some like LED lights, whether like they're right here. And then when you go to open your doors that you still have step lights or courtesy lights. So I'm still, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Got it wrapped up with electrical tape and I'm just gonna shove it in right there. When I go to do the rock lights, I'll probably make a video on that too. I'm gonna look at the body mount right here and I'm going to kind of aim for like the, like the, the not necessarily the, the half point of it, but more of like three quarters of it. We're going to be closer to, to this side. We'll probably go for like right there. And then I'm going to make a, a slit right here with my angle grinder. And then I'm gonna get a slit in the back right here, maybe closer to the, the, the edge of the body mount on the outside because we really need to get rid of this whole section right here that's near the tire. The back of the body mount doesn't really, the tire doesn't really reach that point. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so just to show you guys where I made my, my cuts, there's one right there. And then on the side, that's how it's looking. Now that I've made my slits right there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with my reciprocating saw now, or my hacksaw, and now I can run this cut up to here. And then we're gonna run from here all the way up to there. That way I could come in with my angle grinder and be able to get the, the top cut. Next, we're going to use a hacksaw, or you could use a reciprocating saw with a good blade. So let's go ahead and run these cuts. All right guys, and that is our cut. Now I'm gonna, you know, come in with a grinding wheel and just clean off all the burrs and get some paint off so that we can start getting ready for uh, welding. I did cut a little too much on this side, but that's okay, we can, I can get a plate around this. And then I left a little bit of a lip up top so that I could have something to weld to. So uh, try not to get too close to the body mount, give yourself some space here. And then over here, um, there was like a corner piece that so like it came out here and then there was like a corner piece coming out this way I just kind of took an angle angle to cut and went down that way well, Let's go ahead and get this thing cleaned up and get ready for welding So now I want to start prepping myself with you know getting a plate measured out for this to, to weld in I have right here is just a cardboard piece and what I'm gonna do is literally like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna press the edges up against it and kind of leave an imprint in the cardboard just to give me like an idea of what I need right here. So I don't know if the camera can see that, but there's kind of like an outline to kind of just give me an idea. So I'll cut a little a slightly bigger than this and then once we, once we have something, you know, smaller to work on versus a large plate, 
then we can get it formed better to this. So since we are pretty much ready to start welding, uh, since we are going to be grounded to the frame and there's a lot of electrical components in this truck that is grounded to the frame and whatnot, you just want to play it safe than sorry. So we'll just go ahead and disconnect the battery and to disconnect the battery, just there's a 10 mil that you remove or not remove, you loosen up a 10 mil and then you move one of the, the battery term terminals out of the way and then just keep something in between it to make sure it doesn't regain contact without your supervision so before i get roasted on my whole welding skills i just want to point out that i am by no means a professional welder or fabricator at all this is all just like diy skills professional diy skills i just wanted to show you guys what i have my welder set up to and you know this is what worked for me to do the other side got a lincoln electric pro mig 180 and then I've got a set to setting five right here, and this one's on level D. I've also got the shielding gas right here, which is the 75-25 combo, argon carbon dioxide. And then what we do is we have this open all the way for the shielding gas, and then we've got a set to a level of, I usually try to keep it between 10 to 15 for my shielding gas, and that's what's been working for me so far. Let me show you guys what I've done here as far as cleaning it up. You wanna clean up as much you know clean off as much paint as possible and then over here i've got this grinded down so we could have a good a good ground when we go to clamp our ground on just to give you guys an idea of the angle of how it looks if you want to grab a screenshot and maybe use that as a reference for my plate this is what i've kind of done with it ignore the uh the little slit right there i was going to try something else but i think what i'm going to try to do here is got it like that kind of I'm gonna start welding on one side and then once you have one side pretty much with good contact then you could kind of hammer in the other side and kind of form it to meet up the other curve so yeah let's go ahead and do that we'll paint it afterwards oh we need to do the, the body seam mod afterwards also I do want to point out because we are so close to the body mount that we are most likely going to melt some of this rubber but as long as we're quick with it, we won't damage it too much. So yeah, I don't feel like removing that to do the welding. So we'll just make it work. show you guys where we're at the nice thing about mig welding is even though your welds could be the ugliest welds you could at least grind them down and make them look pretty you can see that the body mount i've kind of ruined but that's okay i'm probably due for body mounts anyways i've got this side all combined and then grinded it down what i did is once i got all this welded in i just took a hammer and you know hammered this into place I'm probably gonna fill this up with welds. And then for the bottom, any of the excess stuff we can cut afterwards, then grind it down, make it look nice and pretty. I think that looks pretty so far. Yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. <laughs> like I said, I am by no means a professional fabricator or welder. So let's get back to it. much welded in and grinding it down so you see i had ugly welds and then i made it look pretty with my angle grinder and a grinding wheel 
Then I went ahead and cut this across and tried to get it as factory looking as possible. So the next step is to go ahead and get this cleaned up. I'm just gonna put some brake cleaner on it, wipe it down pretty good, and then uh, we'll spray it with some, with some coating here. Next we'll be working on trimming the body seam. So well, here's the final result for the body mount chap. We'll just let that paint dry up pretty good. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do the body seam mod. And what we need to do is remove this fender liner slightly a bit. And to do that, we're gonna grab ourselves a Torx T30 bit here to remove these screws. Uh, we only need to remove a few. We only need to remove a few. We don't need to remove all of them, so. So next, we gotta remove these little rivets right here. and. These suckers can be kind of a pain to remove. So if you can see this right here, uh, how it looks, that's the rivet and to pry it out, basically like if you look into the circle, you'll see that there's a tab right there on the, uh, on, on the one corner and then there's another tab diagonally to it on the other corner. You just gotta push those tabs in with like a, a skinny flat head or some sort of pick and pry it out. So once you get a few of those removed, you can actually just you know, pry this back and grab like a uh, bungee cord. So we're gonna hook up like a uh, bungee cable right here and hook up something over here just to hold this back. This is pretty much all the clearance we need. We just need to get to this seam right here. I couldn't find a bungee cable, but a ratchet strap works actually better. Now I'm gonna grab my angle grinder and what we're gonna do is we're going to make slits basically. So we're gonna slit through here every like maybe two inches, two, three inches. That way, when we go to hammer it in, it's easier to hammer in smaller sections of metal rather than the whole thing. All right, so I just wanna show you the progress so far. These are the cuts that I made all the way to the top. And now we're just gonna grab a sledgehammer and hammer it in. So here it is hammered down. You can see I tried to get to it as best as possible. On the bottom here and then all the way to the top. So that's where it ends. And now we're gonna go ahead and generously coat it with some undercoating. So the undercoating that I'm using is this Rust-Oleum Undercoating Prograde. I'll insert a link in the description down below. Well, while we wait for that to dry, let's try to figure out something for this right here. Now I could either just cut it off or there's another mod where we undo these screws right here and then cut a section off the front and basically pull this in more and then use those holes to screw into. But because I have an off-road bumper on the way and I pretty much won't need this fender liner, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall these uh, screws or bolts, whatever you want. To call it. Then I'm gonna take my rivet here and reinstall this one. So what I'm gonna do next here is grab my fender liner and actually fold it inward. And yeah, we'll fold it inward like that. And then we're gonna grab my sledgehammer or grab something to hold it with because you don't wanna burn your hands. 
I'm gonna hold it in place and we're going to apply some heat to it to form it into, into its shape. Now, if you have a heat gun, that works as well. I, I've got a torch, so why not? So you'll feel the plastic get soft and then we'll just hold it in, in its place as it cools down. And it should relatively stay in place. I think that's pretty good. All right, and here's the final product. We've got our body mount chop done here. We've got our body seam hammered in and coated. And then we've got our fender liner folded backward with heat. We've got it uh, persuaded into its place. And then over here, we've got this fender liner with that hump that was down here. We just cut it off. And now I've got like these vents for my brakes. High horsepower stuff, guys. <laughs> So all that's left to do is put the wheels and tires back on, reconnect your battery. When you go to turn this thing on, at least let it idle for a good 15, 20 minutes. I'm pretty sure these Toyota vehicles, Toyota, Lexus, Subaru, they have that thing where if you disconnect a battery or put a new battery on, it's got to go through like an idle relearn for the throttle, probably for the electronic throttle control. Hopefully this video gave you the confidence to do it yourself or convince you that you should probably take it somebody else to do it for you. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead, drop them down below. In the meantime, I need to go get ready for work, but I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It motivates your boy to do more of this kind of stuff. Got to keep the content coming out for you guys as best as possible. But uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.